Why don't F1 cars have airbags? Safety is absolutely paramount in this day and age of Formula 1, but why has the pinnacle of motorsport never adopted the airbag approach to improve safety? To hardcore F1 fans, this will sound like the silliest question ever, but you know what they say in school, there's never a stupid question. Ok, so let's get on to the reasons why F1 cars don't have airbags, and trust me, there's quite a few of them. Due to the tight restrictions of an F1 cockpit, an airbag going off after a collision would more than likely trap the driver rather than saving them. With how little the driver actually moves with the tightness of their seatbelts, it would make the airbag rather redundant, as the main reason for airbags is to stop the head, protected by a helmet, and chest, which is strapped in by the rigid seatbelts, from hitting hard objects within the vehicle. In a road car, occupants need to move around a lot more to so have less restrictive seatbelts. This means that in a crash, airbags need to be deployed to try and ensure that the only things people hit are relatively cushioned. In an F1 car, the drivers are so tightly strapped down using a six-point harness and a helmet combined with head and neck support, or hands for short. These do such a great job of reducing head movement that there's no way a driver's head would reach an airbag, and even if it did, the airbag would probably have to be so big that it'd end up doing more harm than good. Plus, with steering wheels being so complex, where would it even fit? What about protecting the elbows and knees, Matt? I hear you ask. Nope, there really is no room for an airbag to go inside an F1 car. Besides, sometimes drivers do wear knee pads to prevent their knees from banging into the monocoque or each other, which is kind of a type of airbag, right? Moving back to protecting the driver's noggin. A driver's head is so well protected by the current standards of F1 safety. In fact, for this year, driver helmets have to meet even stricter guidelines. Let me give you a taste of what I mean. They are tested for standard low velocity and low lateral impacts, advanced ballistic protection, crush, which is a 10 kilogram weight dropped from 5.1 meters, shell penetration, visor penetration, where a literal air rifle with a 1.2 gram pellet is fired at the visor, flammability, which is a 790 degrees Celsius flamethrower onto the helmet to test that it self extinguishes, and much, much more. These bad boys are the real deal, and it's great to see that safety for the drivers is becoming more advanced year on year. Airbags aren't a stupid idea for every racing series though. In MotoGP they are integrated into their suits, and deploy when they detect a collision or an unexpected angle for the suit to be in, i.e. falling. It's pretty handy as well if you have a collision with another driver and fancy a bit of a scrap, simply set off your suit and you will look proper hench, or, or inflated. My theory hasn't really been tested, alright? Another reason why airbags haven't been modified for F1 cars, other than the fact that there are much safer, more reliable forms of safety, is the fact that it's extra weight to the car for very little safety benefit, and we all know what F1 teams are like trying to make the car weigh as little as possible within the regulations. In a nutshell, it is a terrible idea, but remember it wasn't a stupid question. It happens to the best of us.